Huh? Hello my dear viewers and welcome to a new video in our adventures to reach Master with Volibear. How are you doing and how is your Monday starting off? Well for me I finally got my chat restriction lifted but I doubt I'll be enjoying it much longer. But enough with Riot Weird Punishment System, I have great news for everyone. As of today, Mars 18 2024, Volibear is an S tier pick and it is mainly played in the jungle. Yes, that is right. Volibear changes were indeed really good to help the champion from D or C tier to the highest bracket. This was mainly done by the movement speed changes and the ultimate cooldown reduction, and in my honest humble opinion I'll accept the ultimate cooldown changes even if they remove the movement speed buffs for one main reason, tower disable is a very broken concept, and I think if you are familiar with my playstyle, our build around cosmic drive and ramping movement speed is strong without volleybear buffs, so guys we will be enjoying our team in league now much longer, and hopefully we will get to play some fun games with the bear. But guys, would you rather be good at the game because of your champion or because of your decision making? Well, if you ask me, I prefer to have a solid foundation about the game and be good on average on a champion than being carried by a broken character that is only picked because of his unlimited skin supply. In this game, we have two odd picks in the top side and in the support role. I really like the Warwick pick because I know that the enemy will be unable to deal with the unlimited sustain from the Batman. And yes, Warwick ears are from a bat, not a wolf. That is why I decided to give him a little boost to enforce his early game pressure. I don't think I'll be ganking much mid or bot side since they can rely on each other, especially the rat will be most likely doing that early game toxic behavior of ganking the sperm multiple times in the hope of tilting him. Of course, this game, we traded the early game paths me and Briar, and based on my previous games I rarely lose against Briar. It feels as if Volibear's kit put a leash onto the vampire teenager, and I somehow always manage to either outplay her, or outsustain her. It is not very often when I duel the enemy jungler, but whenever I check my profile about any League of Legends, stats it says top camper. And to be honest, I don't know why, must be a mistake or something. Here I was just passing by and the monkey ended up dead again. Since I didn't go for celerity or water walking this game, it felt that swiftness boot rush should be optimal. I am trying these days to hone my dodging skills, since dodging an ability will give you 100% damage reduction instead of taking it face on. Hence, I should be only trying to absorb damage that I can't dodge and go for happy feet moments to close the gap on my enemies. Some of you would think that armor boots are the best choice. Well, if you are over 40 years old and can't dodge a skill shot, I suggest you go for defensive stats. If not, those boots are only good when the enemy team are full attack damage, otherwise go for either cooldown or movement speed to enjoy the bear. Well, no one saw that. It must be a glitch or something. I think Riot reduced flash range and they didn't mention it in the patch notes. The weirder part is that Warwick died without using his spells. Let's blame it on our top laner for now. Moving on. Remember this. Whenever someone starts thinking in your place, simply mute them. This guy got ganked from the rat multiple times and still is asking for help. Utterly useless fake dragon. No one is entitled to ganks as a jungler. There are camps and objective and as usual, I never ask for a leash. Hence, we start alone and we end the game alone and hopefully winning. Using my smarts, we managed to somehow get that drake, but overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. I should have her backed with my victory and let the tilt spread among the enemy team, but alas, greed made me think that we can get out more of that play, ripey dear Volibear. So far so good. Everything is going according to the original plan. I set up our Giga Chad top laner to success, and now we are harvesting the rewards. Our bot lane is not winning as the score suggests. The just killing Janna over and over whenever their ultimates are up. You should never let the scoreboard deceive you into a placebo effect of victory. I wanted here to kill their Zeri and break her morale. I think her and Velkaz are showing a carry vibe. And if we manage to kill them consecutive times, that should do the trick of tilting them and make our game an easy ride to their nexus. For their Briar, I think we are both around the same average of skill. The decisive element I think in this game will be team play. The one who will have the better team synergy will win. As you can see, no ultimate bot side means no winning, and I feel that the rat is doing all the work, and Vayne is just finishing kills. Well, as long it is working, it is good for us, the important part we should be aware of how their combo is clicking, so that we don't get trapped like this and die for nothing. And as I said, top is our insurance. I could go and camp him further, but that would only draw attention to him, and I feel he is a bad team player and good when he is alone. So, our role is to leave him in the island of top side and bring the fight towards the drakes and wait for the team ultimates. The eel is the bait, the rat is the catalyst and I'll be the center of attention while Vayne is cleaning up the fight. The setup looks good in my mind. Only thing left is to make it a reality. Eight. 
I think in this game, this was my noob mistake. I took Bramble Vest to counter Janna and Briar and forgot I got the item. That is why I didn't expect the tower to draw aggro. A brain fart at its finest. I wouldn't call it learning, just reinforced awareness of my own build. I kept pinging a ward in the Baron buff for years, and no one even dared to do so. We have the Farsight ward, it is just our allies have a short sight mind. Something deep in me was tingling that they are now doing the Baron buff, and truly they were my own technique seems to be working well against me to rush the 20 minutes Baron before the enemy realize, or even ward the pit. Well, you got this win, Briar. We will see who will get the victory. Don't be shocked. This happened because in terms of vision, we are controlling the Dragon Pit. They might take the Drake, but they should only focus on shutting down Warwick now and not come to their blue side and get punched in the face. Our opening hand with the Rat and the Eel ultimate is unmatched since we can guarantee that someone will die in the enemy team. At this stage of the game, I am hesitant. I focus mostly Velkaz or Janna. It seems like the correct play, and also Zeri with Ghost and Flash is like a bee or a mosquito. You can kill it, but you will end up hitting or hurting yourself in the process. That was Batman entrance and only to intimidate the enemy. The true damage was done on an emotional level beyond compare. But the nice thing about Warwick is that you can miss all your skills and simply stand there and punch them until they tell you where is their hideout. Very cool concept, and no one is talking about nerf it. You can notice that the game is going left and right at this instance. It means that soon a team fight will happen, and I think I should be preparing for that by buying some magic resistances to deal with the sperm infinite beam, a mix of true and magic damage. When you read each champion ultimate, they are all broken. But Riot focuses only on melee champions to nerf them to oblivion. Nicely done. But overall, know that we are past the mid-game. We are starting to get more in sync with our spells. Hence, more good plays are happening. I decided also to go for Frozen Gauntlet and delay the Spirit Visage a bit. Well, to be honest, I only got hit by Velkaz three times in this game. It feels like Zeri is going to be a problem if not dealt with properly. I guess some of you go for that item as a starter, but I feel it kills your momentum as a carry and force you into a support role. Hence, I only pick this item when I really see the benefit based on the enemy player's performance and who needs to be slowed so that we can kill and win the fight. To be honest with you, I was shocked to find out that the rat is more fed than the eel, and I wouldn't have known how to deal with it as Volibear against a fed support twitch. I might go for a split push and end the game and possibly build the force of nature to get the best of everything, but we wouldn't know for sure until we live that situation. I decided to show up to their little party and be the front line for the rat, even though Riot removed the crowd control immunity, but you can dodge around one second of CC with your ultimate animation. Hence, if timed properly, you can do something fancy and negate all their debuff, but you need to be a bit lucky and good with your fingers if you know what I mean. I think I have something in my eyes, guys. I had a feeling that Warwick was good alone if you are not watching what he is actually doing. But plays like this will induce in our team morale a heavy toll, and we might start seizing and disconnecting and might lose the game from that. Even myself got possessed by an unknown force that led me to believe that I can go and kill them all and end the game by myself. Pretty scary if you ask me. Well, once must calm down and collect himself after a trauma. This game is in our favor and we would like it to stay that way for now. The enemy team are now trying to catch the rat. A logical and commendable decision. But don't mistake that we are only winning due to Twitch. We have entered the late game stage of the game and everyone got something to offer. As long as we are playing it smart, of course. That felt a bit weird. Did I just teleport to smash her? Well, Volibear can dash over walls, to be exact, not any wall but short walls, and only if you can reach the target hitbox. I was so hyped after this game, and I found out you can indeed do this play consistently. The only tip is to spam movement beyond the wall so that Volibear will drag his body over to the other side, if I may say so. I tested this technique with rapid fire cannon and heart steel to increase my size and range. It was a very fun experience, and I managed to go over the barren pit wall to the blast cone giving. There is an ally that wants to steal it or ward over. Let's hope this is a feature and not a bug. You never know. Riot. Quality of life changes can ruin a champion for free. And hear me out, I wanted to give the pentakill it is. Just my presence is too strong that everyone is dying around me. Sorry, I can't help it. Maybe next time, dear Vane.
I wouldn't go far to disrespect his decision, but I think he did the best he could with the tools he had. His only problem was that I was his opponent. The smite was his cue to leave the lane. Since the shield is gone, I wanted to dive him, and the smart play would be to give up the tower and rotate to his time. But sad life, you are not Khabib. And he was wrestling bear cubs and not full-grown polar bear with thunder and ice to beat people down. Also, my team did well without me, and since the start of the game I was seeking a duel, and only the sperm managed to come and answer the challenge. But overall it was a fun game, and I managed to up my volleybear techniques and share it with you guys. And with that I leave you until another video, I might come up with a build dedicated for volleybear cane mode, where you simply go through walls and see if it can be done in every game, and you might tilt the enemy with it, and as always guys, make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel and leave me a comment. Maybe you are a better volleybear hopper than I am. We'll take care everyone and peace.